Joining us now is Royal commentator Josh Rom. Josh, great to speak with you. Let's talk about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle because they've spoken out after their charity, the Archwell Foundation, was declared delinquent in the US by the state of California. Now, despite the notice being issued by California's Attorney General for failing to pay bills on time and submitting its annual report, the couple insist that the charity was compliant. This is what they've had to say. Well, this is part of the statement from the Archwell Foundation. We have diligently investigated the situation and can confirm that the Archwell Foundation remains fully compliant and in good standing. Due payments were made promptly and in accordance with the IRS's processes and procedures. Furthermore, all necessary paperwork had been filed by the Foundation without error or wrongdoing. Josh, what's happened here? Yeah, so it's pretty much what you just said. And as well as their statement, the uh, California Justice Department has also confirmed that the charity is in current and is is currently in good standing as well. Um, it's exactly what you said in the in the link. There was they they blame it on a check, a physical check that was sent out that state officials did not receive. They also originally claimed that a second check was later sent out as well. Um, and state officials have reportedly uh, confirmed that there was a mishap now. The, the charity is no longer in uh, that delinquent uh, standing, that delinquent label. Um, and, and, and this is either the accounts were missing or the renewal fees were missing. That was what the delinquency notice said. And if, if uh, the state of California followed through with it, then the charity might not have been able to spend their funds uh, and uh, they might be stopped uh, from, uh, I think the quote is soliciting and dispersing charity funds and its registration from California's registry of charities and fundraisers might have been either suspended or revoked. Um, however, sources close to the couple have said it's a mishap. As you said, they have spoken out saying the charity is now in good standing. The California Justice Department has also said the charity is in good standing. So it appears all's well that ends well but mm. is it because yeah. i think what what the the kind of tonal message that has been received is whilst harry and Meghan have been living at large on this quasi royal tour going to nigeria harry of course promoting the incredible cause that is the invictus games Meghan promoting well, herself um, and say <laughs> Nigeria is my country. And, you know, both of them kind of grandstanding on this global platform for themselves. It does kind of set the tone. This notice does kind of set the tone maybe that the foundation may or may not be kind of not their top priority in that. Maybe they may be more interested in grandstanding and showing off um, as being huge members with powerful influence and yet they're somehow still connected to the royal family and that they've still got their titles, the Duke and Duchess mm. of Sussex on the global stage in order to, you know, monetize that for the Netflix deal, bearing in mind the Spotify deal fell through. So I think what this tonally says, okay, legally, the charity is now in good standing, all's well that ends well, the, you know, they, they, they're they keen to emphasise everything was filed on time, it was a mishap, but it does kind of suggest that maybe the charity may or may not be uh, that not their top priority. That was my takeaway. Maybe they dropped the ball when it comes to their charity because their focus appears to be, well, taking part in a royal tour that's not a royal tour and, of course, Megan's busy launching her new lifestyle brand. But Harry and Meghan are back in California now after their tour in Nigeria, and they've told the publication People that they're feeling much better now than during their visit to Africa in 2019. Meghan said, we're just doing great, happy to be watching our family grow up and evolve, and of course, I'm happy, we're really happy. Well, it is refreshing to hear them say this. I suppose it's a different tone than what we've heard over the past few years. What do you make of this royal tour that wasn't a royal tour and what they're, they're saying about it. Are Harry and Meghan's attitudes shifting? Let me tell you why they are happy. 
they are happy simply because, well, I mean, I'm not in their minds, but I think they're happy because, hmm, surprise, surprise, they received good press from the tour. The mail, mm. the, the Daily Mail called it almost presidential, which is for the mail in this country absolutely unheard of. So the fact is, the press were glowing about them. So of course they're going to be happy <laughs> after that. You know, after South Africa, you know, I, when in the tour of, of Africa back in the day, there were reports of a fire in Archie's room and things going wrong, even though they actually received good press at the time, um, they weren't happy with the fact that the press were holding them to account. For example, Prince Harry's uh, lecturing of climate change, of course, he gets that from his father, who's very passionate about the environment. But one can't help but feel it's not necessarily you know the best thing to lecture the public on environmentalism when you're taking pri private jets here there and everywhere uh, yeah and elton john coming elton john coming out saying well it was a sustainable flight really elton love you elton love your music stick to the music elton thank you very much but that's the thing they couldn't handle the criticism they didn't like the pressures of being in the institution so of course they're going to be happy now because this Quasi royal tour that wasn't a royal tour was all done on their own terms in their mm -hmm. own way and they controlled who was there and who wasn't. I mean, the the male's write up actually was saying how it was almost presidential because they were being surrounded by secret service agents all muttering into their microphones and 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 Meghan had a slew of stylists and aides fluttering after her every move. So of course mm -hmm. they're going to be happy with that sort of write-up and that sort of press, especially when they control who was there. They do it all on their own terms, not necessarily on the royal family's terms. They're doing what they want when they want, and they received a good write-up for it. So of course they're going to be happy with that. If they weren't happy, I think that would prove them to really be the most privileged, miserable people <laughs> on earth. Or should I say the most miserable privileged people on earth? Mm. Well, I think they've already proven to be that. So it's nice to yeah, hear that yeah. they're no longer complaining and whinging and, and rubbishing the royal family for now, for now, of course. But uh, let's move on to some more royal news because the BBC has agreed to pay undisclosed damages to Princess Diana's former chauffeur, Stephen Davies, following a high court case. Now, Mr Davies accused the BBC of making fabricated allegations that he leaked information before Princess Diana's famous interview with Martin Bashir. Josh what more can you tell us about this? Yes, so um, a document's been revealed that at the time of this interview in 1995, in order to procure the interview, Martin Bashir told both Princess Diana and Earl Spencer, the quote is, quote, it, uh, Mr Davies feeds today newspaper, change your chauffeur. Now, he says this was completely fabricated because he was working for Princess Diana in uh, 1995 as her driver, as her chauffeur, and then he was fired without explanation in March of 1996. And he said that these fabricated and unfounded um, allegations and accusations are, are a real, quote, blot on his character, so to speak. I mean, the, the BBC has been in really hot water over this interview. We know that Martin Bashir uh, forged records to kind of deceive Princess Diana to kind of make out that those around her couldn't be trusted, that those around her may or may not have been leaking stuff to the press. So this is another member, a close member of her household staff who was part of her everyday life, who was accused um, at the time of leaking stuff to the press and and it, he thought maybe that's why he was fired without explanation in march of 1996 but now the bbc has of course been found to have uh, almost covered this up maybe uh, and and the bbc have agreed to pay his legal costs plus an undisclosed compensation sum to him. They've apologised unreservedly. They've also admitted that the allegations were fabricated. They've admitted that the allegations were unfounded as well. They are, they, they're keen to emphasise that they're a different corporation with different management now, that Martin Bashir no longer works for them in any capacity. Um, and I think that the BBC are very keen to put this sorry saga to its end. Of course, Prince William has said that the interview should never be shown on television ever again. This was, of mm. course, that infamous 
Panorama interview where Princess Diana said, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a little bit crowded there or thereabouts. Um, and there she also put doubts onto whether the whether at the time Prince Charles, the then Prince Charles, was suitable for the, the big job at hand. So I think this is once again the BBC be, being made to look quite foolish here for, for what yeah. went on at the time. I mean, even uh, we know the Crown doesn't always get things right. In fact, they got a lot wrong. I previously spoke to Michael Cole for The Sun in a big, explos uh, big expo explosive expose article where he said, you know, I put stuff to him. Did this happen? Did this happen? Did this happen? Did this happen? And he said time and time again, that's wrong. That's, that's not the truth. That's an insult to the truth. This is an insult to Diana. The makers did not respect Diana. So we know the Crown doesn't get it right all the time but even the crown showed the bbc to be falsifying uh the situation at right. the time of that interview so i think even that speaks volumes and josh king charles has unveiled the first portrait of himself since his coronation the large pink painting by artist jonathan yeo which is more than eight feet tall is getting mixed reaction it certainly divided our office here in sydney josh what do you think of it I can imagine. Um, I think, uh, I actually, I've got mixed feelings about it because I think as an artwork, it's beautiful, it's representative. Um, he's dressed in the uniform um, of the Welsh Guards. That was, of course, he was made the regimental colonel for the Welsh Guards in 1975. He's got a sword in one hand and then on his left shoulder, he has a butterfly landing, of course, symbolizing his love of nature, symbolizing his love um, of wildlife as well. Uh, Queen Camilla is said to be a fan. She has she was said to have stepped in during the last sitting where she commented to the artist supposedly, quote, yes, you've got him. I mean, the, the portrait shows um, His Majesty the King looking gentle. It's, he's got a very mm. kind face in the portrait, but he's also looking determined. Experts have said the kind of bold pink, pinky reddish color is meant to kind of represent the uh, environment warming up, supposed to represent climate change and, and the king's face kind but gentle, kind of representing his determination to combat that as well. So I think there's a lot of representation here, which is a good thing. And I think as an artwork, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, as a state portrait, as an official portrait though it's a bit modern artish yeah. i think it's a little bit progressive i don't think it's what we necessarily expect of official portraits i think mm. compared to official portraits of her majesty the queen it kind of stands out like a sore thumb does it show that his majesty wants to be a different kind of monarch yes i think there is that representation in there that he's a new progressive monarch and, and this painting is just one example of how the monarchy is adapting to uh, the modern age um as an artwork it's beautiful um i think it captures him in a really nice way but as an official portrait i think it's a bit progressive dare yeah. i say there are kind of a bit woke representations <laughs> in there um listen i think the monarchy it's great that the monarchy adapts i love king charles wanting to be this progressive monarch i love prince uh i love print uh sorry king his majesty king charles wanting to be not just defender of the faith but defender of all faiths protecting religious freedom in this country protecting minorities emphasizing the inclusivity of the monarchy, saying that this is a monarchy for all, not just in the UK, but across the Commonwealth. Um, lovely painting. Um, as a painting, fabulous. As a mm. portrait, ugh, jury's out. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. It's certainly not what you expect from a, a portrait, but it is growing on me as an artwork. Josh Rom, it's so great to speak with you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us again on Power Hour. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Can't wait to be back.